love is of God. If you love, you're born of Him. Love washed away the multitude of sin. We had some technical difficulty at the beginning of Kim's sharing. She opened up with Hebrews 12.1 and the New International Version, which reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. News translation says, as for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses around. So then let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly and let us run with determination the race that lies before us. So I started thinking about race and I thought about a marathon. I was never an athletic person. I did band. But people who run, man, they got to be disciplined to get out there and when I went to gym class, both my feet were always on the ground. They never left. But a marathon runner has to be mentally prepared, right? I was reading some of the things these people have to do, and I'm like, how can you live your life? That, that would have to be your life. They run 26.2 miles. That's a lot of miles. I can bike five on an incumbent bike, a recumbent bike. And it's a specific distance for a reason, and it wasn't set until the 20th century. The modern marathon was inspired by the legend of an ancient Greek messenger in 490 BC who raced from Marathon to Athens, a distance of nearly 25 miles, news of a Greek victory over an army of Persians. That was the message he was bringing. And after finishing the run, he collapsed and died. <laughs> to commemorate the achievement, the 1896 Olympic marathon was 40 kilometers, which was less than 26.2. In 1908, however, during the Olympic Games in London, the course was extended, allegedly, because Queen Alexandra wanted the race to start on the lawn of Windsor Castle, so the younger members of the British royal family could watch the runners from their window. <laughs> the race finished in front of the royal box at the Olympic Stadium, which happened to be 26.2 miles. So that's why it was changed. Now, not only is, are there marathons, there are different types of races. There's the full marathon, which is the 26.2. Then there's the half, which is half of 26.2, which is 13.1. There's the 10K. Not that anything matters to me because I don't run. But there's an ultra, there's a trail, and I thought I might be able to do this last one, a virtual. Because <laughs> you can run from anywhere. All you got to do is send in your money. They, it, it gets your little award at the end, the medal, if you complete it. And I thought, no, who's going to know I'm not running, right? I could just be there going like this at my, at my desk saying, yep, I'm running. It may take me a little longer to get there. But, so that's, that's that. The whole thing I'm trying to say is that our race, we don't make the course. God set the course before us. There are many different kinds of marathons in many different places. And these are just a couple examples. I know it might be a little hard to see. But these are the routes that this particular one took. And this one, I don't know, that must be a multi-day one. Because there's no way anybody could run that in one day. But I thought, well, who runs it? How do you determine where this race is going to take you? Well, some of them say they want to take you through the scenic parts of town. Well, if I'm going somewhere to sightsee, I don't want to be running by it and say, oh, yeah, there's the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> who wants to go sightseeing that way? But anyhow, my first tip is that you have to enjoy the ride. You have to... We have to do things in God's time, not our own. Because I remember as a little kid, you know, we all dream big. Oh, when I grow up, I want to I wanna be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. 
I wanted to be a mom and a wife. That, that was my dream, right? Do all those dreams come true? Sometimes. Sometimes not the way we think they should because our paths take different turns. So enjoy the ride wherever God sends you. Number two, run your race. Not mine, not Candy's, not Lynn's. Our lives touch other people in different circles because we're not the Stepford wives and we all came out of the same pattern and we all, dinner at five, we all have lives and, and they're all different. Jeremiah 29, 11 in the Amplified Bible says, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. It's not about anybody else's journey. I can't walk in your shoes and get the same effect that you would have because my demeanor is different than Richard's. His intelligence is different than mine. Lucky for him. <laughs> what God has called you to do is for you, so we shouldn't compare ourselves to other people and how fast they're running or how far they're going. Number three, very important, know who's for you and who's against you. I had two brothers. They weren't necessarily for me growing up. They used to say they were going to put my, my high school graduation picture in the basement to scare the roaches away. Oh. Weren't they great? <laughs> but I've come much further than scaring roaches away, and now I scare people away, because when you speak the word, if people don't want to know, they're just going to go, see ya, and they're going to walk away. So in John 10.10 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Man, I'd rather have God on my side than anybody else. Um, the devil. He's just as personal as Jesus is a savior. The devil is a personal adversary. He knows every fiber of your being. Thank God he can't read our minds. But he does know the word. And he does mix the words around sometimes to make us think, oh, that's the word talking to me. But you've got to be sharp on the word, because if you're not sharp on the word, he can get over on you. He can just lead your race that you're going in your little, what is it called? Lane. A, a lane, thank you. I was going to say aisle, but, but you're running your race in your lane, and you start going into the next guy. You may trip that guy up, or you may trip you, and he's just going to sprint over you and keep going. So you have to know. 1 Peter 5.7 in the New Living Translation says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy. The devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. When I was young, younger, I was going to um, do a, a customer's hair. I was walking up Hamilton Street. And I'm walking up Hamilton Street with my little blue box I got from cosmetology school. And this lady opens the door in this huge, I mean huge, Doberman Pinscher. Mm -hmm. They're cute to look at on paper. <laughs> they're not cute to look at when they're running full speed at you. I was newly out of power for abundant living. And I was dumb enough to believe that the name of Jesus Christ would stop anything in my way. That dog got to two feet and I said... Sit in the name of Jesus Christ. And he sat there and he looked at me like. Oh. And then the lady's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She's running after this dog. She comes again. She says, what did you do? I said, I told him to sit in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, he did? I said, yeah, because every name has to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. So you got to know who's for you and who's on your side. Number four, you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. Psalm 139, 14 says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Well, praise God, I didn't have anything to do with how I look, or where my nose was placed, or my ears, because God designed all that a long time ago. 
So I just have to go with what God put on me and in me so that I can be the best that I can be. Romans 8.37 says from the Living Bible, But despite all this, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us enough to die for us. If you've ever had somebody that you absolutely love die, chances are they didn't die for you. But had they died for you, their life would have meant so much more and accomplished so much more to spring you forward. It's like, oh, well, I'm not going to let that death be in vain, right? Jesus Christ died for us because we were bad enough. We needed to be saved terribly, terribly quickly. <laughs> so we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ and what he did. If you don't know who you are, then you don't know what you, you can do. The only way we're going to know who we are and what we can do through Jesus Christ is through the Bible, through God's Word. He had men and women through the years write it down so we could have it to look at today. He gave somebody the brains to translate it from Greek and Hebrew into English. Eventually, we got it in English. So it behooves us to look into that word and know who we are. <clears throat> Number five, know that you're a has-been. Anybody ever think you're a has-been? If you acted in a high school play and you weren't very good at it, you were a has-been really quickly. Really quickly. <laughs> because, Jesus, because of Jesus, everything in your life has been changed. Has been changed. Jesus took care of all of your situations and all of your problems. When he died on the cross 2,000 years ago, 1 Peter 2.24, the Living Bible says, he personally carried the load of our sins in his own body when he died on the cross so that we can be finished with sin. Does that mean we're not going to sin? No. But it's available to give it to God and not have to live with that sin forever. Um, he, he died on the cross so that we can be finished with sin and live a good life from now on. For his wounds have healed ours. Do you believe that? Sometimes when you're in the thick of things, it's very hard to see. It's very hard to feel better. It's very hard to get up and encourage yourself every day to say, I'm going to get through today without crying. And for some people, it's like, what are you crying about? Because you don't know what my pain is. I don't always know what your pain is unless you share it with me. We can't help each other if we don't mesh our lives together with the Word. That's why God gave us a family. We're all brothers and sisters. We all put our pants on the same way, one leg at a time. We've all been raised, I kind of think of it as like a smorgasbord, because my parents taught me one way, Lynn's parents taught her another way. Her way may be better than mine, or elaborate on why I'm doing the things I'm doing. So, salvation and healing and the joy all belong to us because of what Jesus Christ did. <clears throat> Number six, quit trying and start relying. How many times have I started my diet this year? Let's see, this is October. At least once a month. <laughs> At least once a month. We have to stop trying to figure everything out by ourselves. God knows the plan that he has for each one of us. He knows when we're getting off the road. Just like Sheppy said, Carmen said, he just boop, bumps you back on. When we used to take the kids bowling when they were little, they'd have bumpers that you'd pull up into the, into the uh, gutters so that the ball stayed on the lane. Well, God kind of like has his word or he has somebody there to like push you along in the right direction to get you back going where you should be going. <clears throat> Did you ever try to make something happen? You want something so badly, and, and no matter what you try, it's just not working. Well, if you could have made it happen, it would have happened. But God knows what you're going through. God knows what's best for you. Not just good. Not just good enough. He wants the best for you, where you can thrive, and you can shine, and you can let Jesus out 
so other people can see who he is and what he can do. And because we all live in a different circle of people, we all reach a different category of people. And that's where Jesus comes out and it's like, hey, we're all a family. I can't always reach the people that Pat hangs around with because I don't know them, first of all. She knows who they are. Or Candy, I can't help all the people where you live. That's why you're there. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. God knows our needs before we even ask. Oftentimes we try to face life and the struggles that come along with it all by ourselves. Been there, done that. It's not a pretty thing. It, it's If somebody comes at you that you don't particularly care for, you don't want to hear what they're saying. You know you should be going or you should be listening, but I don't like you, so I'm not going to hear it. If we simply ask God to intervene, he will surely answer our prayers. They may not be the exact prayer you're asking for because he's got something better for you. So we, a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I sell myself short. And I use that verse, God hears the prayers of a righteous man. And then I think, sometimes I have to rethink my prayer because it's not the prayer that I need. It's not what I, it's, it's what I want. Okay, I can be selfish and I can be, this is what I want, spoiled. But that's not what I need. Sometimes I need a little smack on the butt. Like, hello, that's not a need. You do need to have life. You need to have food. You need to have clothing. But it doesn't have to be from Neiman Marcus. It could be from the thrift store. And I get just as much fun because I know when th something jumps off the shelf at me, it's God saying, this is going to look great on you. <laughs> Even when I put it down and I walk, it's like, yeah, I don't think so. And, I, and then it's not on the shelf where I put it. It's over here in another part of the store. It doesn't belong. And it's like, okay, I guess that one's mine. And, and the kicker is it's on sale because God knows my heart. I don't like to spend full price for anything. Um, so it might not end up exactly how you wanted it, but I promise it will happen according to God's perfect purpose. Then number seven, you have to let go and let God let it go. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 it says let him let him have all your worries and cares for he is always thinking about you and watching everything that concerns you. God can't work on your behalf when you're holding on to your problem. I made this because throughout my life I have experienced some of these things fear Anxiety, didn't do addiction, relationship problems yet, job and housing, not too much for me, sickness and disease, I've dealt with some things with other people in my life, but if I say I'm going to give God my problem, and I'm like, okay, here God, you have it. And I don't honestly believe that. You know what happens when I walk around? That's going to follow me wherever I go. It's going to be hanging on to me. So when I give something to God, he says, cast my cares on him. You know what that means? So now I'm walking. Oh, look. It's not plaguing me anymore. It's not following me around. But not only that. I have to go into the Word of God, and I have to find the scriptures, because I know everything in the Bible pertains to life and godliness. So I have to go in, and I have to look for those scriptures that are going to shore me up in that area, that are going to help me out. And I have, to, I have to burn them in my head every day, or read them on a paper every ten minutes until I finally get it. Like, wow, what took me so long? It was so easy to get rid of it. Or... You know, you had a friend to help you out, you talk, you chat, you whatever. So you got to let go of it. So I, I want to make it available at the end. I have this give it to God. Inside here is a paper and a pencil. If there's something in your life that's hindering you and getting you off track that God wants you on, I want you to write it on this piece of paper. 
if it's more than one thing, write it on this piece of paper, fold it in half, take the tape, put it on, and stick it to this balloon. Now, it's a, it's a flag symbol balloon because to me, the flag means freedom. So when you put your, whatever's hindering you, whatever vice is stopping you from being your best for God, I want you to tape it to this. Because then after fellowship, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to release this. And so everything that's hindering you, that is on this, give it to God and don't look back. Because you're not getting this back. I'm letting it go. All right? So, that's that. <sighs> Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will meet your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You should not spend your time worrying about what needs to be done in your life. Yeah, I, I'm a pretty good procrastinator. I know I got, if I have a list, I'm very good. But if I don't have a list, it's like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then you sit down at the computer and you're looking for things and doing stuff. And three hours later, it's like, oh my gosh, now I got to think about dinner or I got to, I, I got nothing done, right? So that's kind of like worrying. You can worry. It's not going to change a thing. Instead, pray to God and thank him for meeting your needs before you even know what they might be. Life comes so much easier when you learn how to let go and let God. Number eight. I love this one. I said this to somebody one time. It made me feel so good. It's not about you. This person came. They were supposed to do refreshments, and they just handed me a bag. Now, I'm um, nine months pregnant, having a cl class at my house. They hand me these oranges. I'm like, <coughs> hello. It's not like I don't have anything to do because I was still working, and we were having a class at my house, and anybody who took that class, it's a pretty intense class. It's three to four days a week and hours at night. So my house had to be clean. I worked. I had to do dinner because... Back then, you know, you just put dinner on the table because that was one of the things. And she got, and I'm thinking, what? She got mad at me because I, I said to her, I said, what is this? This isn't refreshments. This is you bringing me a bag of oranges. Where's the love in that? And she says, she got mad at me. And I said something to Nick. I'm like, and this girl just thinks the world revolves around her. She's single. She got, she got all the time in the world, but she was offended because I didn't like her refreshments. Well, that's okay. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. Our life should be about Jesus Christ and what he did for us in every situation we're in. So, it's never about you or making a name for yourself. All right. Number nine, it's all about Jesus. All about Jesus. You have that relation. Anybody ever had a really best friend? How did you feel with that friend? You could tell them anything. You could be yourself. How many people in here are actually themselves? <laughs> I really, or do you just put on a certain face when you go to a certain place or a certain crowd? Or are you just you? If you're sad, your face is going to show it. If you're hurting, people are going to know one way or the other because you're not, you're not who you normally are. So why pretend to be somebody you're not? Anyhow, we have to be so sold out and so positive in our belief that Jesus and the power of his name can do anything. Anything. Mark 16, verse 7, 17 and 18. The New King James Version says, In my name they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Have you ever done that? Have you ever seen somebody get healed? Now, I... You know, healings come in a lot of different ways. I mean, there are people who have been delivered from great, awful diseases. But dang, somebody who's somewhere with swollen glands to hear and there's not a doctor available because you're in the middle of a gigantic meeting, what do you do with that? You just put your hands on their throat and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, you need to go. And in 10 minutes, the person's sitting there like, mm, hey, look, I can swallow. Isn't this great? But do you have the believing to do that to somebody? I don't care how small the ache is or the pain is. Jesus doesn't want you to have that ache or pain. God didn't design us that way. 
the New King James. Oh, I said that already. Oh, yeah. Mark 16, verse 17 says, In my name they will cast out demons. Do you walk into a room and feel it being uh, oppressed? Have you ever walked in? I walked into this house many, many years ago after I had left it. And I walked in and it was like, <gasps> I couldn't breathe. It was like just the sorrow and, and the oppression. The, the, yeah, the gloom, the oppression, the sadness. It just, did you ever get hit with a ton of bricks? That's what it felt like. I just couldn't breathe. But in Jesus' name, I could have walked in there, had I known, and said, get out. Open the door, get out in the name of Jesus Christ. You, 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 whatever thing is plaguing you, or somebody else that you know, when you are so sold out that you have the power that Jesus Christ had, you walk into a room like you own it. It's like the darkness is here. You come in and here's the light. Hey, how's it going? What can I do for you today? See somebody hanging by the wall, which used to be me, by the way. I was the wallflower. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't make any attention for myself. But that's a person you need to go to and help, perhaps. Some people do like to be alone. But God doesn't want us to be alone. So you use Jesus' name to cast out demons. Let me tell you, if you're not sold out that Jesus Christ is going to get rid of that demon, don't even attempt to do it. Because that demon may come and bite you. Just saying. <clears throat> Jesus' name to cast out the demons. In Jesus' name to heal the sick. What's your demon? These are some of mine. Fear anxiety, sadness. There's envy, there's strife, suicide, drugs, fear. Fear is a big, big deal. I wouldn't say I was afraid of my own shadow, but I, I was afraid that I would never have my dream in life. Because where I was, I was so downtrodden and so unloved, so I felt. However, God came into my life and Jesus came into my life and changed all that. And he gave me so much more, just as Sheppy was saying, the many blessings. So I, I got recovered. God took me off the shelf, dusted me off and said, hey, you're worth it. You're worthy. I want you to know that in Jesus' name, situations have to change. If they don't change just like that, keep on it. Don't just say, well, I guess it's not supposed to be. If you need to get somebody to agree with you, like it says in Matthew, for the same thing, do it. Grab somebody and say, hey, this is what I'm believing for. Just like Sheppy, I'm believing my car. It's not going to be resurrected from the dead this time, right? And number 10 is to be relevant. We have to, we're not living in George Washington's time, so we're not using the vernacular that George Washington would use. The kids today are using, I mean, for a while, Nicole, a couple years back, she was using the word rent. I'm thinking rents, to me, rent is you, you live somewhere, you're paying somebody money because you're renting the place. Well, rents were parents. Did anybody else know that? Oh, no, I don't feel bad. But that was a big deal. It's like, okay, cool. So we have to learn what's going on in our world today. There's a lot of fear in our world today. People are afraid of the COVID and anything else that comes down the pike or situations that you've been into. Um, people have a lot of traumatic stuff because of fear. It's got to go. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 from the Living Bible says, To preach the word of God urgently at all times, wherever you get the chance, in season and out, when it is convenient and when it's not. Correct and rebuke your people when they need it. Encourage them to do right and all the time be feeding them patiently with God's word. You have to meet somebody where they're at. 
I like this one better. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. The Amplified Bible says, Preach the word as an official messenger. You know, once you're born again, you become an ambassador. Did you know that? Ambassadors are pretty big deals. They get to go places. They get to talk to big groups of people. You have to be ready when the time is right and even when it's not. Just like Sheppy was saying, you got to open your mouth. you got to be there. Keep your sense of urgency whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable. If you're waiting for a perfect time for everything to come together, sometimes that just doesn't happen. It just doesn't. Whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome, correct those who err in doctrine or behavior, warn those who sin, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. Sometimes it's really hard raising little children, so you've got to tell them the same thing like a million times before they finally get it, like, oh, okay. And then when they finally get that one, they learn something new, and you have to start all over again teaching them. And you have to be patient, and you have to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Consistent. Consistent. Thank you, Janice. That's it. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope it helped you. <laughs> I have one more thing I'd like to do. I remember how you told me the life may not be easy. This is a very important book. It has God's heart for each one of us in it. There's nothing that any of us have gone through that somebody hasn't gone through it. It may not look the same. It may not be dressed in the same clothing. But the principle is there. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And this book pertains to everything in our lives for godliness and life. So I would encourage you when things start not being simple in your life, Crack this book open and read. <laughs> Look for specific things. There, there are all kinds of uh, research books and stuff that can help you. You don't have to be a genius. They've made it pretty clear in some of these books, like the Young's Literal Translation. All you got to do is put a word in. And, and it will give you a ton of scriptures that go. So you can just continue to work with that and um, have it out of where you are. So that's what I would wanted to share. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And remember, if we are shut down for some type of censorship reason, you can always check out our videos at www.cvm.church. Thank you for your patronage. This was brought to you by Chapter and Verse Ministry. Love is of God If you love, you're born of Him Love washed away The multitude of sins